white and one black. Each player uses either one of those. It does not mean that they move differently. They're both the same king. So the king, actually very valuable, but it's actually very, very weak. It's not um, capable of defending for itself. It can only move one square at a time in every direction. It can move every direction, but it's very limited space. So it's a very weak piece. So you'd better defend it with other pieces than leaving it alone. Even though the king is a very weak one, it has um, special rules for it and we'll discuss about it in the, later in the video. Next, we're gonna talk about the queen. Unlike the king, it's valuable, but still, it's the most powerful uh, piece on the board. Just like the king, it can move any direction. But a bonus for the queen is that it can move how much ever squares you want. You can move 10 squares, I mean, you cannot move 10 squares. You can move eight squares, you can move two squares, or if you want, you can even move one square. So it's a very powerful piece that you want in the end of the game. Next, we're gonna talk about the bishop, also known as the advisor. This too is a very powerful piece, but not as powerful as the queen. It can only move in diagonals. It cannot move in straight lines according to the rules. But it can move, just like the queen, it can move uh, how many ever squares you like. So this too is a very powerful piece and it acts as the royal guards of the king and queen. These are more like the attacker pieces, so more than defending, they're more used for attacking the enemy lines. Let's go to the next piece. Next are the rooks. The rooks are also powerful, but they're like the opposite of bishops. Just like the queen, it can move any number of squares, but it cannot move in diagonals like the bishop or queen. It can only move in straight lines. The rook is also known as the tower for its robust build, or it's also known as the elephants. These rooks are both used in end games which means the end of the game in which it's very crucial for trapping the queen, I mean the king, and it's also very important to, to defend your pieces during the beginning of the game. So it's like a defender during the beginning of the game and in like an attacker uh, as you move on in the game. Next, we're going to delve into a tricky piece or should I say, a very complicated one. It is the knight, also known as the horse because of its appearance. So, the horse does not move um, like the rook, which means it does not move in straight lines. It does not move in, di di it does not move in diagonals like a bishop, or it does not do both like the queen. It's a very unique piece because it moves in an L shape. And when I mean L shape, just look at it. You can go two step forward and one step to either direction, or you could do one step forward or two steps in either direction. You can do this formula in all the four directions, north, east, south, and west. So um, when I mean these moves, so we can say that the horse is very flexible and agile, and it's very tricky. 
so we can use the horse to trick the opponent and attack into the weakness of the opponent's base. It can be used as an attacker. Also, it can be used to defend other pieces in very crucial moments. And this horse has a bonus move. When a piece is obstructing its movement, it can't jump over the piece to land on its destination, but it cannot capture it while jumping over it. It can only capture pieces that are on its destination and it does not harm any piece um, when it's going through it. Next, we're going to talk about the pawn or commonly known as soldiers. So, just like the horse, they're a little bit tricky when it comes to moves. The pawn can only move one step forward when you're regularly moving. But, when a piece is in front of it, it cannot uh, regularly go in front and capture it. Instead, it's just blocked. But, when the enemy is one step into the diagonal, it can capture the piece. So, it, so, we can say that it does not capture in its usual direction, but it does capture in these two spots while it's moving. Another bonus, just like the horse, Pawn, instead of moving one spot, for the first move, so for example, when you're taking this pawn, if it's the first move in the game for that pawn, either you can move one step or get a bonus and move two steps. So this is like an extra rule for the pawn. So this is it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and you learned more about chess and I think you've got an interest for chess from now onwards. So thanks for watching this video and let's meet in the next one. Till then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.